Hello, thanks for listening to the FLP, the Finance Leadership Podcast. It's your fortnightly focus on the latest information and news about the Finance Leadership Programme pathway to your CGMA qualification. It's produced by AICPA and SEMA, together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. You can find out more at AICPA.org and SEMAglobal.com. I'm Kevin Gormley, and today I have the pleasure of having a colleague join us for a conversation about the Sri Lankan market. So Zahara Ansari is here and she will tell us what she does at the association. Thanks, Kevin. I am based out of Sri Lanka and I look after the Sri Lankan and Maldivian market for the association. So I head the operations and I work with the registered tuition providers, the universities, regulators, professional bodies and employers. I enjoy promoting the qualification that I believe changed my life, which is SEMA's CGMA professional qualification. Thanks, Sarah. So we're here to talk about Sri Lanka and the currency market in that area. So maybe if you just give us an overview of what the market is like at the moment, how many accountants, how many students, what's the, the skill, what's the competition, etc. What type of companies work in the market that you service? Sri Lanka, as some of you may know, is a beautiful island in the Indian Ocean. And we are very proud to say that we have a very steady amount of accountants working in Sri Lanka. In fact, if we consider the SEMA members and students, we have the second largest community of SEMA students and members across the world after the United Kingdom. In terms of Sri Lanka, yes, in the recent past, we've had economic crisis and so on, but we are coming out of it steadily, slowly. In terms of our SEMA community, we have about 5,000 members and 9,000 students, and it's growing. Across the various professional bodies, we have about 100,000 to 120,000 accountants because we have the various other bodies, the local bodies and so on present here as well. In terms of the profession, in terms of employers, we have all kinds of organizations present here. But I am also proud to state that we are the suppliers of finance and accounting talent to the world because we have a very strong BPO, BPM arm in Sri Lanka as well as the IT section as well. In Sri Lanka, SEMA members head various organizations mainly because the qualification has been promoted as a business management, business leadership qualification. So if you take any corporate organization, maybe even the top 100, they are mostly led by SEMAs. And SEMA members work not just in the private sector, but also in the public sector, such as the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, which is our second uh, highest employer in terms of SEMA talent. And if I am to also talk about the brand and the reputation for AICP and SEMA, we are a household brand here. We have a very strong presence and we've been here for more than 57 years. Sizable numbers in that market, Saharas, you know, in terms of population size. And uh, obviously when you compare that to the number of accountants and actually our footprint, it's it's quite sizable. So it's great to see, actually, I, I should have known this, but I didn't, that you hold second position to the UK in terms of population size for our students and members, which is fantastic. Obviously, part of that success has been obviously the brand, the qualification. But in more recent years, you have uh, used the Finance Leadership Program as a conduit and to grow in your market. Could you tell us a little bit about why you brought FLP to the market and how it's gone? So when um, FLP was initially introduced to the region, so this was just before the COVID. So in 2020, we launched it using a press conference and we brought all of the people together, some employers and so on, and we launched it. And at that point in time, we only had one reseller and one university who had tied up with us. And from then to now, 2020 Jan to now, we have six universities tied with us, three resellers, and over 1,000 students who undertaken FLP. The reason why we went forward with FLP was because we identified that this was the best way to complete the CJMA professional qualification. We've had nearly 10,000 exams being taken every year here, and we've had a lot of students who were also part of universities but completing the same out on the side. But then we realized that the best solution for them was to come through the FLP route, which is like the digital first route, 
than coming through the traditional route. And ever since we launched, we've had immense uptake. And that's why even the number of resellers grew because the registered tuition providers who became our resellers saw the potential of the qualification. And these universities who come on board, they came requesting for it because they saw the potential. In terms of our existing students, when it was opened up for existing students to come on board the FLP route, we've seen a lot of interest, especially from those who've actually halted SEMA for various reasons. Recently, last October, we celebrated uh, this milestone of 1,000 plus students coming on board uh, the professional qualification through the FLP route. And at that event, we had about uh, 50 students who had completed it. They gave us testimonials and they were talking about how they had stopped because of various reasons, because of issues that they had in concentrating, going for physical classes and so on. But FLP is the game changer. It has enabled them to complete the qualification whilst doing whatever else they wanted to do in life, be it studies, be it their professional careers. We've had mature students coming back and saying, this is it. They're never going to go back into physical, full-time, normal way of studying. So it's actually exciting times for us. And uh, we've been having quite a number of drop-in sessions to support our students as well to promote this. And in terms of our university students, uh, most of the private universities have come on board. We've had a challenge with uh, the state universities, mainly because they cannot sign agreements and so on. But we are figuring out solutions for that as well. Okay, great. It's a, quite a common theme that we hear quite a lot of, you know, the terms like transformative evolution, disruption in terms of the market and what FLP brings to the market. But I guess the, one of the most important things is the flexibility it affords students in terms of work-life balance and just that way of iteratively learning and getting through the qualification in a, a much more student-centric um, manner. It is a common theme and we've heard that in many companies across the globe. So it's great to see such a had a positive impact for, for you as a region and for, for the students that study the qualification. And you mentioned the universities, obviously the, the state and private universities. How are they using the product? Uh, so is it purely as a simultaneously do your degree, get your CGMA, or is it being used as a supplementary learning product or both? Um, it's a mix of both because the six universities are doing it in their own ways. Our largest um, supplier of students would be Imperial College of Business Studies who provide the UWS degree. So they do it as a supplementary option. And that's where we have, if I'm not mistaken, even right now, we have about 300 students following FLP. Annually, they give us 200 odd students who come on board. And in fact, tomorrow is their graduation. So they've got around 50 students who've completed who will be celebrated at that event. More than the students, to be honest, we've seen enthusiasm from the academics because they see the potential for them and for most of us, there's great pride in uh, AICP and SEMA because we've been trendsetters. We were the first to come up with the computer-based exams. Then we came up with the online exams when COVID hit. And then we included digital skills into the syllabus. So when we first took this to the universities, the academics got the most excited. And in fact, some of them are also coming on board because they see the potential of the qualification. So I suppose when those people who championed this to their students are actually buying into it as well, that nothing speaks stronger than that. Um, the people who pushed this to the learners and then the teachers see the benefits. So it's actually a very, very, very strong story. And in terms of their co our competitors in the Sri Lankan market, are they doing anything similar or does this just now demonstrate more innovation from the association? Competitors wise, no, no, they, they are all impacted and I don't think there's any product to beat FLP as of now. This is, like I said, a game changer. This is beyond exemptions that you can offer. This is beyond price points that you can offer. This is like clear blue ocean strategy that we always talk about. So we've really changed how, how the game's done. <laughs> I know. Our, our competitions throughout the globe have been left stunned, I think, it's some, in a certain manner, because this was such a significant piece of innovation that came from, from the organization. It has proven already to be hugely um, beneficial and supported globally. So 
it'll be interesting to see what happens in that space. Uh, I'm always curious to find out if if you see any any local pivoting of organisations or people trying to imitate what we're doing. So nothing yet, which is positive. When the economic crisis first happened, a lot of people were like, okay, uh, do the local qualification, that's cheaper. But then our numbers have been increasing. Our volumes have been really, really good, mainly because there's nothing to be the global prestigious qualification that we offer. And then came FLP. This is the best way to complete a professional qualification. You get the skills certificates and on top of that, you get the professional qualification. What more would a student want? And people still realize the benefits of the brand, of what CGMA brings to your CV and your career prospects, irrespective of cost. Obviously, a very small decision factor when considering the rest of your career. It's an investment because CIMA provides you global employment opportunities and all of that. Yes, in the same way, university is, is an investment, you know, so great to see that people and the brand being so strong in, in Sri Lanka. In terms of learning points or anything, when you reflect back on FLP in Sri Lanka, is there anything that you would raise at this point to say, well, if I could do it again? Um, I don't have any regrets as to the way we've taken it forward. If at all, I would feel my team and I should keep pushing it more. Because we've also realized that despite us having drop-in sessions on a monthly basis for our existing students and so on, there are still segments of students who are not aware of it. I am not sure whether the young generation do not look into emails. (laughs) And uh, although we promote it on social media, they aren't seeing those. But there is still a segment that hasn't seen because every time I go to an event, I mean, when we do events at schools, universities and various institutes and occasions, I talk about this and then they come back and they're like, oh, we didn't know. So I know we have promoted it so much on the media, social media, all of that. But there is so much more that can be done. And especially we have the core element of FLP coming in as well, right? So there is potential, there is opportunity, and we have to constantly keep communicating with our guys. So that's just one, perhaps. Yes, it is a global issue around communication with the markets. And there's challenges around that in terms of communicating with certain sectors. And it is something that's very, very difficult. And then obviously the age of social media, reaching the right people at the right time is a challenge also. But just keen to get your reflection on how that went and whether there's any learnings we can take away from our regions and all our listeners. It's been an interesting insight to get your view on how that market's going on and to see such innovation in, in your region is fantastic. And obviously people taking FLP on board and, and been hugely successful. So congratulations to you and your team. It's uh, fantastic to hear. Thanks for your time to talk candidly about your experience with FLP and rolling it out in your market. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. There's plenty more to explore about this topic on our show notes. Uh, so the links to all the resources that are relevant to the podcast will be available. Just click on the info icon in the podcast app on your smartphone or tablet or open the episode on your computer's web browser. You'll find everything right there. For more on FLP, go to enroll.cgma.org. So thanks again to you, Zahra, for talking Thank to you. us today. I appreciate it. And of course, thanks to all the listeners that tune in here on a bi-weekly basis. If you know a friend or colleague that would use this information, feel free to share it with your network. You'll see the sharing buttons on the podcast app. That's it for now. Keep an ear out for the next episode in a few weeks and have a good day and keep listening. This content is designed to provide illustrative information with respect to the subject matter covered and does not represent an official opinion or position of the ARCPA, the Association or SEMA. It is provided with the understanding that they are not engaged in offering legal accounting or other professional services. If such advice or expert assistance is required, the services of a competent professional person should be sought. The AICPA, the Association and SEMA make no representations, warranties or guarantees as to and assume no responsibility for the content or application of the material contained herein and especially disclaim all liability for any damages arising out of the use of, reference to or reliance on such material.